What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart, and um, bah. oh my! <laughs> you see the topic? Let's go. We haven't talked about Cyberpunk 2077 in a long time. Over a year, I think it is. So, today, Cyberpunk 2077, they uh, put something on their Twitter and on their YouTube where they said, Cyberpunk 2077 has sold 20 million units. What? I literally cannot believe that. Cyberpunk has sold 20 million. Oh my god, bro. Madness. Madness. But look, let's be honest. Since Cyberpunk Edge Runners, I too have been playing Cyberpunk. Edge Runners has made me appreciate that game in a different way i can't exactly explain the way i see the game now but i know it feels different and the thing is about cyberpunk is look to this day it does not meet the incredible illusion that they painted that it was going to be but if we're talking about an RPG, first person, cyberpunk, set in the future, story, single player, game, they knocked out the park. It is legit. It's amazing in that respect. The only issue that there ever was with this game is the fact that they lied to us. They oversold what the game was and the fact that the game did not work at all at launch and even on the PC and the PS5, it was nothing special. Nothing stood out about it other than what you would see in any other first person action RPG story single player game, right? But it was is a good game and they've vastly improved the game since launch since that absolute disgraceful launch the game's got better they've added a lot more stuff the game works now the game doesn't crash half it doesn't crash actually it doesn't crash at all zero i've played that game quite a few times for a long time for a couple weeks now well basically since um Cyberpunk Edge Runners came out, which was a couple days ago, no, last week, and it has not crashed once. Been having a good time, um, going after Adam Smasher. You know, I've really enjoyed. I feel it's therapeutic fighting, destroying Adam Smasher. Very few are therapeutic. Seeing Pan Am again. Doing a story with her, because that game doesn't have New Game Plus, right? So all you can do is, if you have a save, which I have, keep the save and replay certain parts, right? And I've got, like, almost unlimited money in that game, because when the game first came out, because it was so buggy and glitchy, there was a glitch where you could essentially just keep doubling, tripling, quadrupling infinitely stacking your money to no end so i have a save near the beginning of the game where i have the number can't go any higher right so instead of doing new game plus if i do want to start the game again i just have a good time literally all i do is i start up that save and i start again where i have a lot of money so at least i have an advantage right so i'm playing that game and i'm having a good time I did the Edge Runners DLC that they added in that game. Like it was, it's free, and then you can get the main character 
of Cyberpunk Edge Runners, his mum's jacket. Because his mum had a jacket and you could get that same jacket in the game. I love it. I love it. So I'm actually enjoying it. Even though you your character's in first person, so you can't see yourself, but you know you're wearing it. And there's certain situations where you can actually go into your apartments and look at yourself. And in certain cutscenes with Pan Am, you can see yourself when you take a picture. So they did a really good job, man. It's amazing to me what a DLC, sorry, a animation, DLC as well, because that's what's fixed the game, and updates and patches, but what an additional story can do for a video game, because this happened with Witcher 3. Witcher 3 was crazy, because after the TV show, I didn't replay um, Witcher 3, by the way, right? Because I already played, I, I got 800 hours on that game. That should tell you everything you need to know, right? So I did not need to play it again. But, again, but on my channel, this channel, Mind Explosion, yeah? I got like a lot of Witcher videos, because I played that game to infinity. 800 plus hours. The views on those videos went through the roof. I had a video uh, where I was talking about a special um, al alchemic substance. I can't remember what it was called. Yeah. White gun. <laughs> Watch the video. That'll make you laugh. Yeah. I think that video had something like maybe 7,000 views. If you look at a video now, that video has got almost 60,000 views and I would say over 40,000 of those views came during Witcher on Netflix the season one most of 40,000 of those views came within the showing of a, I think it was that like, I'll say three weeks of that show being out all my Witcher videos just the views just went crazy, skyrocket, right? And Cyberpunk Edge Runners has had the same effect, man. And in this TV show, they did not hold back, they were not afraid of their own shadow. It was an R rated, there was violence, there was shooting, there was sexual acts there was uh craziness action there was shooting going on there was a love story there was a thriller aspect to it there was a political aspect to it there was a criminal aspect there was the family there was the the world you felt the world of night city was more than what the game could tell you that Night City was. Because the main character of Night City, of Cyberpunk, is Night City. The world is the main character. The game does a good, a sort of good um, job of telling you that and showing you that. But I feel like Edge Runners did a better job because the city itself absolutely devoured David, the main character, and everybody that he loves, except Lucy, she survived, and Falco. But everybody else got obliterated. They got eaten up by Night City. And it makes sense when you look at the world. I mean, yeah. It killed me when Gloria died, David's mum. You know, when Rebecca died, even though she made it towards the very end of the show, she still died. I was gutted. When David died, I'll be kind of honest, I didn't really care about David. It was sad, but I didn't care about him because he was so, he annoyed me, if I'm being 100% honest with you. Right, just the way he kept on freezing and I know he'd been through a lot of trauma and he's got so much chrome. He's in, he's going into cyber psychosis, you know, and only because he's got such a high tolerance to 
um, cybernetic implants and everything like that that he's able to resist as long as he has. But still, the fact that he keeps on going into cyberpsychosis and coming out of cyberpsychosis, which is absolutely incredible once you understand cyberpsychosis and how the cyberpunk world works, right? Just the fact that he was able to withstand it and overcome it was incredible and it showed he yes he is a main character but to be honest i didn't really care for him too much i liked falco rebecca and lucy and um his mum gloria and it cut me up that she died man but the characters i liked at least two of them survived falco and lucy which is amazing right and you know even like the music the music in as uh, so i'll give an example there was a, I think it's called, I really want to stay at your house, right? In the game, I have a different feeling for that track. Driving at night time with that music playing, driving through Night City with the neon lights, with the music in the car, hearing the sound of the car engine, just driving through Night City. Amazing. I'm hype. It's a beautiful thing. In Edge Runners, that tune makes me so sad, bro. It makes me think of good times mixed with sad times and depressing times. I just see death and misery, hope and despair, love, absolute sadness and Night City. To the point where I don't want to hear that track anymore. Even though I love the track. It makes me more sad and depressed than happy and hype. Even though it's an amazing track. What I attach it to now has changed because of the Edge Runners. This is like a review of Edge Runners, isn't it? But, you know, it's kind of all in the same thing. So the Edge Runners has emphasised cyberpunk tenfold because now we feel the world is more than the game has been able to show us now when you look at the game you do feel the world as its personality even more even though it was always there it wasn't sold to you as much but because of edge runners you see another protagonist another scenario another completely different aspect of night city but still treads the same ground as the game yet this happened before the events of cyberpunk 2077 it makes you appreciate the entire world so much and you can go into the same world that you visited when watching edge and um, while you while watching edge runners cyberpunk and a lot of people are feeling it. And I don't want to say I'm one of the people that is feeling it. But. Hey. I have started playing Cyberpunk again. I am enjoying it. Uh, and I'm actually really enjoying playing Cyberpunk. Even though the game is more fixed now than it was. But the adventures in that game are still incredible. They were never not incredible. It was just the lies the deception and the fact that the game didn't work now the game works better than it did before and now it's just a special experience i can't believe it sold 20 million so since it's come back because at launch it sold 30 million units right well for the first I think it was month or two months. It had sold 30 million. It could have sold double that. To be honest, if you if the game had launched and they kept their promises or just kept the game for another two years. And I did say in my first Cyberpunk video where I went off on CD Projekt Red, I did say the game needs two more years. Look what's happened. Two more years late, two years later, the game is fixed. The only thing I will say as well is they did promise a big 
lot of support, big support for the game, but there isn't. Basically, they fixed the game. There's going to be one more expansion DLC coming out for the game. And then that's it, the end. Right, so they did lie. But the one thing I will say about that is I'm not too bothered, really, because I didn't buy a... I didn't buy the DLC pack that was for it or the special edition. I just bought like the normal version of the game. So I don't really care about those promises. I'm not going to buy that DLC. End of the day, the character V is dead. So I don't like stories that tread ground with of dead characters. If a character's dead, I don't need to know another story with a dead character. I'm that guy. But... As I was saying, Cyberpunk, I, I'm trying to think where I've seen personally and experienced such a massive turnaround. It's incredible. The game has gone from zero to hero because they fixed the game and Edge Runners. And to be honest, I knew Edge Runners was going to be gone like. I knew it. Studio Trigger. Grand Lagan, roll, roll, fight the power. I knew they were going to do a good job, but I didn't know they were going to do such an incredible job. And now look what's happened. Cyberpunk's at 20 million units sold. 20 million copies. That's mad to me. That is absolutely mad. And to be, I'll be very honest, I'm going to play Cyberpunk today. Everyone's enjoying Cyberpunk. Everybody's sad because of Edge Runners. The story, the ending. Really incredible show, man. Edge Runners. Wow. Now, let me be honest. When his mum died, Gloria. David's mum, the main character. I My enjoyment of that game went down. Emphatically. But I was still enjoying it. I was still amazed by what I was watching. And it's the world of Night City. That's what Night City does. It eats you up. It destroys you. Lucy even said, an edge runner's life is not defined by how they live, it's how they die. So his destiny, David, is always to die. So I get it. Death is part of Night City. The corruption, the destruction. But it just hits you different, man. When you play Cyberpunk now, it hits different. And this is coming... Watch my original videos of Cyberpunk. I'll put it in the links. I'll put the links down um, in the um, in the section description. I went in on Cyberpunk. I went scorched earth on Cyberpunk because I played it at launch. I'm an early adopter of Cyberpunk, so I was there for the absolute shitstorm. Of cyberpunk. So. We're here now. So the turnaround. Especially for me. Is wild bro. So yes. That's me talking about cyberpunk. 2077. You can call this a review. For Edge Runners as well. Yeah. Amazing TV show. 10 out of 10. Recommend you go watch it. 100%. And, uh, man, I'd love to see another um, TV show of Cyberpunk. They could do it because the world of Cyberpunk is so big. It doesn't need to be about one character. It's a world. You have built a lore with Cyberpunk. You can do TV shows. At the minute, I don't want Cyberpunk CD Projekt Red. To deal with Cyberpunk. Focus on Witcher. Do what you do best. Cyberpunk. Put it to the side. 
focus on Witcher. Warriors, that was me talking about the turnaround to CD Projekt Red's Cyberpunk. Sold 20 million copies as of the 28th of September 2022. Incredible. Less than two weeks after the release of Edge Runners, the Netflix TV show, Cyberpunk has just turned into... That TV show has turned into a martyr or something, man. It's wild to me. So, yeah. Incredible. Cyberpunk is back. Feels weird saying that about a two... Is it a year? I don't know how when it came out. Two-year-old game. Crazy to me. And, um, yeah, Warriors. Thanks for watching. Take care. Stay blessed. And I'll catch you in the next one. Laters.